Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Account, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be solely talking about Road to the Finals, how you can trade with them live in-game, and also market movements and price movements that they will have after their games are over this week and into the future, right? Talking about Road to the Final cards that are going to get upgraded, Road to the Final cards that are going to be no longer receiving upgrades because their team will be knocked out of the competition. We are in the knockout stages of Champions League and of the Europa League, and that's going to happen, right? We have to talk about viewing those cards in a certain way because they're basically just a cool-looking inform once we get uh, to a point where that team is no longer in the competition. So the number one thing I want to focus on today, though, is the live trading, right? Because we have been doing a lot of this uh, last week on Thursday with all the Europa League games. We were actually live trading on stream, twitch.tv uh, backslash the foot account. Link is down below in the description. It is so fun to live trade these cards because they move every single time there is a goal scored and you can make some crazy profits if you get in right when a goal is scored, people go and buy up that card because then they anticipate the upgrade happening and then uh, they fluctuate crazy, crazy amounts. For example, last week when Lille scored the first goal in the game against Lille and Ajax, this Renato Sanchez road to the final item went from 1.3 million coins all the way up to 1.55 mil in a matter of five minutes. So a 250K swing in five minutes. Then, of course, Ajax came back and scored two, and he is now down at a million coins, and he was even less than this post-game, right? And also we have cards that, you know, won the first game, right? You have guys like Quincy Promes. This is another one of the market movements we'll watch for post-game. This guy was 240K, right? Uh, I bought three of them. Ajax scored, boom, boom, two goals in a row. He went all the way up to 280, and then post game he went back down to 240 again. So then uh, he got bought back up now as people are starting to invest for those potential upgrades, and he's almost 300,000 coins. So there's tons and of tons of fluctuations with these RTTF cards. But the first thing I want to focus on is that live trading because again, this week we are in the uh, the second leg for the Europa League. Uh, and that's we're going to talk about the Europa League a decent amount because we are going to get a lot of cards upgraded this coming Friday night with Europa League upgrades finally going to happen with those second, le uh, second leg games being played. We'll find out which teams will qualify for the round of 16 because there have been no Europa League upgrades yet for the knockout stages. It's only been a few of the Champions League cards because what you'll see again this Friday is the first leg of Champions League cards from the Atletico Madrid Chelsea game or the City versus Munchen Gladbach game. The games are happening Tuesday and Wednesday in Champions League. If any team wins those, they will get an upgrade, but then we're waiting for the actual teams to qualify for the next round of Europa League to get an upgrade there. So let's talk about which cards and how you can kind of trade these guys in game. Now, of course, you're like, wow, can I really trade with these guys live when they're playing because their prices are so inflated already? The answer to that is yes, because what happens is a lot of people that have invested in these, you start to see the sell-off, whether they won or lost, a lot of that sell-off happens actually post-game. So during the middle of the game, these cards fluctuate up and down because people think they're going to get upgraded and they think their prices will go higher. Uh, and you can honestly, when the game starts, yes, Insigne is up 30k from where he was at a low point. Napoli is down 2-0 to Granada on aggregate right now in the going into the second leg of Europa League. Yes, this guy is up 30k, but look how high he was last week during the when the games were happening, 220k. So this guy's still 80k from where he was. If Napoli can mount a comeback, and this card uh, could potentially getting upgraded to an 88, if Napoli end up scoring three goals and winning like three nil in the second leg, then you would see this guy absolutely go past 220, 230, 240 thousand coins. His card would get bought up like crazy, right? That's kind of a basis that you can use if it's a card that's dropped off so much. Uh, you can kind of look back at their prices from before and and you know maybe expect them to get back to that price is a, is a good point uh, to start with if they would score goals and continue to come back so that's one example right there uh, now when you're trading live in game right you're like how the problem with trading live in game is you have to be one of the first ones to actually start to buy the cards because just like you know if you're watching the game in real time literally when that team scores a goal um, people are going onto the market and they're buying these cards up and they're mad. 
and buying them, right? I missed when that I mentioned that Renato Sanchez went from 1.3 to 1.55. I missed a Renato Sanchez at 1.3 mil because I was too late to go and buy that. I missed the buy window by just a hair, right? So how do you know when a team scores and how do you know what price to buy at? So what you kind of have to do is you have to be monitoring the price during the game. So like let's say on Thursday when Ajax and Lille are playing, that this Quincy Promis card is still right at 300,000 coins. They're of course up two to one and he's inflated in price already, but if they score again and it looks like they're gonna win and he's gonna get that guaranteed upgrade, this card's going to an 86. So I would not be surprised if he went further up in the game coming this Thursday, right? So let's say, you know, um, one thing that I like to do to get really fast notifications, if you're watching the game live, right? It, there's not too much that beats that, but one website that I like to use to get live notifications for when a team scores is this app called SofaScore. You can use FootMob. Um, there's a couple other apps out there that give like live updates for when a team scores. And this is a great way to get that notification that a goal has been scored. Usually it's pretty close to almost live, not quite, but if you can't watch the game like actually live, um, that's like the next best thing in my opinion. Except for one example, what I'll or I'll uh, explain in a second. But an app like this will give you live updates. So any anywhere that can give you like the fastest live scoring updates, then you get that update on your phone. Boom! You log into the companion app, and the cards are going to be flying off the shelves. So you're going to have to pick one up fast. And what you're going to want to do when you get that purchase is you're going to have to like wait, right? Because people who are on live streams and people who are late to the party will start buying that card up as well. So let's say Quincy Promise is 300,000 coins. He's going to get bought up for like the next 5, 10, 15 minutes before people start to list again. 15 minutes might be too long, but 5 to 10 minute window and you'll see a lot of the cards get bought up, bought up, bought up. Now, if it's a card like Promise who is already up a lot, he might not spike as much as somebody like Insigne could who is way down because they're not really projected to come back and win. So kind of keep that in mind as well. Is your as you're expecting a rise in these cards, always keep in mind how well that you know what the expectation is for that card. If they're supposed to lose, then you know they're gonna go up more because they're defying the odds. But if they're supposed to win, they might not go up as much because that's already expected, and some of that price that they're at at the moment is already inflated because people are expecting that win. So the important part is getting into buy as fast as you can. And let's say Insigne, right when Napoli scores 140k. Honestly, you know, you kind of have to bite the bullet sometimes and you have to search a little bit higher and start buying those cards 5 to 10k higher because you know they're going to keep going up further than that and you're still going to be able to profit, but you have to actually get cards bought because everybody's rushing to the market at that point in time to buy those cards. So you have to be fast. That's the most important thing. You have to be fast with that and then you really have to watch the market for the next 5 to 10 minutes after that goal is scored, then you have to time that sell, right? When you when you stop seeing people um, buying the cards when they get listed up. So let's say Napoli scores one goal. This Insigne goes up to like 170K. You kind of have to also, that's another thing you have to talk about or think about is, am I going to sell because they scored one goal or do I think they're going to come back, right? So like watching the momentum of the game, actually watching the game, um, you know, pan out as well. That's why this kind of trading is so fun. It's risky. It's very risky. Uh, but it's also very, very fun because you can kind of say, yo, Napoli, you know, they just got a goal. They're starting off hot. It's the first half. Maybe, you know, I think they're going to continue to play well and get a couple more goals here. And then potentially this card can go higher. So you're in that situation where do I sell the card? I bought it for 150. It's now 175. Do I sell and I take my profit there? Or do I hold for the potential profit to get up to 200K plus if they keep scoring goals. So those are all the sorts of questions that you have when these cards are live and playing in game. Now I will say again, as I mentioned, the sell time is important too, because if you if there's one goal scored and let's say for promise, since they're already ahead, you might want to just cash out when that first goal is scored. He's gonna take a quick spike and then everybody who is gonna be like, all right, he's gonna get upgraded, GG's might start listing the card or um, you just I might not see as many people buying that card. So selling, if you want to get the peak sell time and the most, I guess, um, less risk is right after that goal, five to 10 minutes, you'll see that card spike up. Then people start undercutting after that. So if you sell in that first five to 10 minutes, that's going to be a great time to sell those cards after they do score a big time goal. So let's talk about one uh, other thing here and let's kind of transition to like post game. 
Uh, actually, before I do that, I forgot to mention that um, when you're watching the game live, if you don't have an app like this, or you want to get the absolute fastest, fastest updates for when a team scores. Now, you have to be of age to do this. I don't know what like the gambling uh, ages are, whatever country you're in, um, what the legal age is for, that, for gambling websites and for apps. But when I was here live watching the games last Thursday, I noticed that one of my betting apps, FanDuel here in the USA, was updating the scores faster than these websites, which makes sense, right? Because they have to obviously set the odds uh, for their uh, live betting, right? Those are going to update basically the fastest out of anything that you're going to be able to find. So if you are able to do that, uh, download like one of those betting apps. I don't know if you guys uh, across the world, what like if you can bet, if it's, you know, sports betting is legal where you're at or what apps you have um, or what websites you have. But definitely keep that in mind too because those are going to update really, really, really fast, almost in real time. So um, that is one little tip I would give you as well. But let's talk about post game now. We've kind of talked about in game live trading and the risk, the timing post game, right? Everybody starts listing their cards post game. And we have a couple examples that we can talk about this already. I mentioned the Quincy Promes, but also you have guys, uh, let's say they, let's say they lost, right? Let's say they lost. Um, now this week is an upgrade week except for Champions League. So just like we had last week with Klosterman and Griezmann, their cards, since their team's lost, they dropped off considerably post-match because people were saying, hey, the potential upgrade for these, the chance of that happening is really slim. So you had this Klosterman go from like 600k all the way down to 415,000 coins. He's 435 right now, but he was bought back to like 430. These cards will kind of bounce back into the second leg, especially the Champions League ones, right? Griezmann was post game all the way down to 265. I bought two or three of them and uh, he's bounced back almost to 300K at some point. So these cards are just very rare that post game for a Champions League, if the first leg is still going on, if they lose this week, right? This week's games, Tuesday and Wednesday, watch those cards get very low and then have potential to bounce back depending on the links, the hype and the usability of that card. Always kind of keep that in mind post game now if a team wins and the upgrade is guaranteed and this is where i want to talk again let's say you know spurs are looking really good to get a, a win this week right 1.4 million for sissoko uh he's getting a plus two his card's going to be ridiculous 100 percent watch this card after the game because when this card's so inflated spurs win the second leg or they score goals he might not go up that much he honestly might drop if this guy's like 1.3 mil or 1.25 post game this happened with last week's game for spurs sissoko was like 1.3 mil before the game he went up to 1.39 when they scored and when they were winning inside the live game and he dropped down to 1.22 post game and now he's back up to 1.44 so what I would say 100% is since it's upgrade week for these cards, watch the sell-off post-game because you could see crazy market movements with people that are just listing their cards and selling them because they think that the price is too high and they just people just like to sell Road to the Finals post-game. So that could be one thing you watch out for as well for a bounce back on those items. And um, the one thing I will mention though is let's say like this Griezmann card again, let's say Barcelona can't come back. Let's say Barcelona can't come back. It's not looking. It's not looking probable that they do. What happens to a card when it is no longer live? Two eighty. That's not a bad price actually. But when a card is no longer live, um, we'll use this card last year as an example. No, no, you know, no offense, GGMU fans. I'm not taking shots, but. You see crazy drop-offs. Now, last year, if you're going to look at a lot of graphs from last year, you're going to notice that there's huge drop-offs in March. That was because of COVID and the competition stopping. But when this is basically the drop that you see when a card no longer becomes live. This Marshall went from 200,000 coins on Xbox to literally 50 to 70K, right? You're going to see crazy, crazy drop-offs because this card, once they are no longer going to be in the competition, if they get knocked out, a card uh, from that team is basically going to act as an inform and that's kind of how you have to view it but if it is a meta player if it's a popular player we saw this last year in fiba 20 as well before COVID happened is that you'll see players drop off in price but then they'll rebound because it's a very meta player like watch this port too really solid card good links right spanish right wing in la liga there's not a lot of right wings in la liga in this game this is a really good card he's probably going to drop off to be closer to like almost 100k uh, this guy was down to like the 130 or 140 range post game 
He's back to 160, but I would not be surprised if this guy goes back down to like 100,000 coins. He's still a very good card in his league. For fortune, you might see some of those cards slowly bounce back over time, uh, and those cards will bounce back quicker and faster and higher amounts depending on how hype that they are. So I think I've covered a lot about Road to the Finals, and that's what I wanted to do today. Again, it's very risky to live trade in the game, but the profits can be insane. Again, you're looking to buy right when a goal is scored. Get that notification. Look at the cards. Buy the cards. Be monitoring the price during the game to watch the fluctuations. Um, and then you're looking to sell five to ten minutes after that or hold if you think the team is going to score more goals. And then, of course, um, post-game, watch for the market movements of cards that are getting upgraded later in the week. These cards should get upgraded on a Friday night. It's going to be late Friday night, but Friday night, like midnight into Saturday UK time, uh, that's when you should see these cards, or 7 p.m. Eastern. That's when they were upgraded last week um, for the Champions League cards. That's when we're going to see a lot of upgrades coming this week as well. So... That's kind of the video for today, boys. If it did help you out at all, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions. And, of course, subscribe if you are new. It's been Nate the Foot Account, and I will catch you guys later. Peace.